Hey there, Chris Steins here. Today I'm talking to you guys about the most common questions and concerns that I get when it comes to intermittent fasting. If you're watching this live, go ahead and say hi. It's always nice to talk to people that come on. If you're catching the replay, you can drop a two or just say replay later. Um, so you guys know I'm really passionate about intermittent fasting. This is like, I don't know how many videos I've done about it, but um, I wanted to talk about common questions that people have about intermittent fasting. And if you have more that come up while I'm doing this, you think about it, drop them in the comments. If I don't answer them here, I can always come back and get them when, um, when it's done. Hey Jamie, hey Adriana. So okay, the most common question I probably get is, what can I drink in the morning? Okay, when it comes to intermittent fasting. Because most of, for my clients, there's different ways to intermittent fasting, but the way we do it with my clients is usually a 16-8 schedule, meaning you eat all your food in an eight hour period, and then you fast for 16 hours. So that often looks like maybe your first meal of the day is at 11, your second meal is at two or three, and then your last meal would be at seven for that eight hour period. So like, what can I have in the morning? I'm so used to, you know, can I have coffee? Can I have tea? I've actually had people ask if they could have water, if that would break their fast. No, water will not break your fast. When it comes to coffee, plain black coffee will not break your fast. Tea will not break your fast. When you think about breaking your fast, you have to think about what we're trying to achieve with intermittent fasting. So we're trying to get our body to dig into well, there's tons of benefits to it, but if you're doing it, um, you're, you're trying to get your body to dig into your fat cells. You have to be void of food for at least about eight to 10 hours in order for that to happen. Um, so if you eat food and then you trigger an insulin response, boom, you are now done fasting and your body is going to use the sugar from that food that you ate as your fuel instead of digging into the fat that we have to use as fuel because your body actually can only store a small amount of sugar. It's stored in the liver and it's stored in the muscle. Whereas the fat, hey Lizzie, hey Marvin, whereas the fat in your body, we can store it all kinds of places. We can put it all over the place. It, some of it is in the liver, but the rest of it, all over our body. So, um, so yeah, so we want our body void of that. So if you're eating something, let's say you put like sugary creamer in your coffee, that's probably gonna break your fast because that's gonna trigger an insulin response. Um, if you put regular cream in your coffee, will that trigger a response? Will that break your fast? Depends how heavy your pour is maybe. Um, I don't think it will because that's fat that you're doing, not a lot of sugar, and it hopefully isn't a whole bunch of calories. It's probably like 35 or 50. A good rule of thumb that you'll hear a lot of people say is don't go over 50 calories. But I would also add to that and say, be mindful of what those 50 calories are. I don't think if you pop, you know, if you're like, okay, I've got 50 calories I can spend, I'm gonna eat four Sour Patch Kids or whatever it is. No, that's not, you're still gonna have an insulin response from that. So you still have to be mindful of what those calories are, but a little cream in your coffee, maybe almond milk. I know if you're used to cream, that looks like, ooh, gross but it's all what you get used to. I promise you'll get used to it. You may even someday drink your coffee black. So that is what, that, that's what you can have in the morning before you break your fast, okay? That's, so anything over 50 calories, you're probably gonna break your fast. Okay, the other one is um, that I hear a lot is, aren't I supposed to eat right after I work out? If I don't eat, isn't my body gonna like break down muscle to use for fuel? Guys, why would your body spend all this energy to break down your muscle to use as fuel when we have ample fat on our body that it could use for fuel? Like, why would it do that? The only way that would happen is if you were at a body fat percentage near like 6%, where there's not really fat, where there's not really fat on your body for your body to break down and use it as fuel. Otherwise, how might it be so much more work for your body to go and try to break down a muscle? So you don't need to worry about that unless you're like a 2% or excuse me, a 6% body fat. Otherwise, you have plenty of fat that your body can break down and use for energy and it's a cleaner source of energy for your body anyways. So there's that one, okay. The third one that I hear sometimes is what if my schedule varies? What if, um, you know, like if I end up having dinner later one night 
Hey guys, hi Missy, hey Tara. Um, if I end up having dinner later one night, should I push my breakfast back the next morning? And then if I push my breakfast back, do I do, do I move my dinner? So what do I do? What do I do if that happens? So if it, it happens occasionally like that, it's no big deal. Don't adjust your meal time the next day. Just go back to eating at your regular time because you're also kind of trying to balance your hormones, your hunger hormone ghrelin. You're kind of, you're, getting your body adjusted to a new time of eating. And so you want to kind of keep that as constant as you can, but don't, it's not going to be perfect. You're not gonna be able to do it all the time. Even if you can only do this some of the time, that's still wonderful. And you're still going to get lots of benefits from intermittent fasting. Okay. So don't worry about that. If you have the kind of schedule, sometimes I have clients that are nurses and they do the night shift. So their days are sometimes very different. If that's the case, you need to spend a little more time figuring out the right times for you. And my suggestion is just be, make sure um, at least one of your meals falls within that time frame, and you might have to adjust the other two, but you wanna make sure one of them is always constant throughout the day, throughout the different days, if that makes sense. But if it's just a one-off thing, you ate late one night, don't worry about adjusting it the next day, okay? Um, if you are interested in getting some more information about intermittent fasting, maybe pairing it with a high fat, low carb lifestyle, that's my jam. That's what I teach. And for the month of June, I am partnering with a coach, excuse me, <laughs> with a doctor and a nutritionist to join me and my clients to guide you guys, um, learning all about high fat, like low carb lifestyle, intermittent fasting, why you should do it, like the science behind it, how to do it, and then be with you on your journey so that um, we really make it a lifestyle for you. We help you make it a lifestyle. It'll be an eight-week group. If you're interested in that, you can comment below and let me know. Otherwise, those are my top three questions. You hear Cruz? <laughs> yeah, you hear Cruz. He's eating his pasta. He gets real excited about pasta night around here. We just make it for him. Anyways, um, <laughs> if, um, but anyways, those are my top three questions that I always get. If you have other questions about intermittent fasting that I didn't cover, comment um, below this video and I'm happy to go back through and try to answer them as best as I can. Again, I, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist. My, the way I'll answer is just from my experience and what I've seen my clients experience as well. I've been eating a high fat, low carb lifestyle along with intermittent intermittent fasting for four years. It's by far my favorite way to eat. Um, I feel like it's the simplest, it's the most satisfying, and I see the best results. I feel the best doing it, so I'm pretty passionate about it. Okay, so anyways, um, I don't, let's see, okay, I don't see any questions so far popping out. Is, oh, is it normal to maybe not lose weight initially? I don't know how long you meet initially means, but usually you would see a little bit of change within a week. You might see a little bit of change from doing it, depending on depending on how you're doing it. So I'm not sure what your term, what initially means, or what your expectation is. Remember, guys, healthy weight loss is actually only two pounds per week. So keep that in mind when you're when you you know managing your expectations on what you wanna see as a result of your actions. That's really what you're aiming for, and that, that's good, sustainable, healthy weight loss. You always talk about, you know, I know we all want results quick, we wanna lose it fast, but it's, it is true what they say, oftentimes you'll put it back on fast if you lose it fast like that too. So, anyways, um, any other questions, comment below, and I will continue to answer them probably um, by, um, by text, but writing it out later, not on here now. Um, anyways, okay. Thanks for, but thanks for being on with me, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Take care.